Hello again, and welcome to our series of studies uh, with the subject being uh, characters in the Bible. And uh, in the New Testament today, we're turning to the Gospel of John, chapter 5, and the first 15 verses. And we're looking at this man, the disabled man, who had waited a long time to uh, be cured, hoping that he would be in the right place at the right time when uh, the uh, occasion arose every year. And uh, if you'd like to read those first 15 verses of chapter 5, perhaps you'd like to do so now and press your pause button and then come back to me. Well, welcome back. And uh, uh, you will have seen from those verses, this is a familiar story. Uh, we all know the story. Um, and if you don't, well, you'll be able to read it for yourself. Uh, how this man had waited so long and uh, he must have been so frustrated as he looked every year uh, for a, a cure and, and it wasn't forthcoming. And Jesus comes across this man. He comes across this man and he's able to help him and we shall see how. Um, and, and it seems to me that this emphasizes the compassion of the Lord Jesus the compassion of the Lord Jesus. He was so compassionate. If you look at uh, our Lord's work through the Gospels, you'll see that he uh, was, was so kind to people. And, it, you know, it prompted me to think about us, about our compassion, our level of compassion about those in rather much more need, usually, than we are. <clears throat> those who are desperately worried about something in life, whether that be finance or relationships or, uh, you know, uh, security or whatever it is, those who are perhaps like this man, disabled, those who are uh, in some way um, at the bottom of the pile uh, in, in life in some way, perhaps rejected socially, I wonder where our compassion lies and what level uh, we can honestly say we are compassionate. Well, this story um, throws up, to my way of thinking, mainly the, the phrase that sticks out to me is six words, really. Six words that I'd like to major on, and they are those words that Jesus said to this man. Do you want to get well? <clears throat> Do you want to get well? And I want to suggest this morning that there are two ways, two prongs to this question and the answer to this question really two prongs one prong is to those who have not yet uh, found their way <clears throat> to the feet of the Lord Jesus um, one prong goes to those who've not yet um, uh, found that they can say come into my heart Lord Jesus as the old chorus says come in today come in to stay come into my heart Lord Jesus and if that's your experience and you've not yet been at that point where you've said, uh, yes, Jesus, I want to take you on board and accept your wonderful offer of salvation and forgiveness. Well, here's a challenge for you. Do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? And uh, that's a fair question, really. Most of us in life uh, require some help somewhere along the line and mankind individual men and women need a great deal of help to be right with their maker secondly the second prong i would like to t uh, um, flag up really is to the christian to the person who does believe who has taken jesus into their lives and who is seeking to uh, lead the christian life to follow jesus because uh, <clears throat> the 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 subject still applies really and and the subject that we find on our uh, radar as we live the christian life is quite simply temptation one of the main subjects anyway and as we face up to the fact that we are tempted in life i think it does us good to remember that fact that we were reminded of uh, two or three sundays ago uh, that temptation is not sin. Temptation is not sin. It's what we do with temptation that leads us into sin if we will allow it. 
on that recent Sunday, we were reminded of that. And no temptation, the scripture says, is too strong for us. Alone? No. Uh, it's not too strong for us, but not alone. It's not too strong for us with Jesus on board. We need him. We need his Holy Spirit to help us fight temptation. We will never do it on our own. Whether you believe in a personal devil or whether you don't, uh, I can assure you there is a personal devil and uh, scripture supports that. And uh, he is strong. There's no doubt about that at all. He is very strong and very wily and very crafty. And we are not man enough or woman enough to tackle him on our own. But with Jesus on board, with his Holy Spirit, we are able to do it. Let's face up. Let's face up to it. Do we want to get well as a Christian? Do I want to get well? Do I want to get over these temptations which come to me? Temptations which are very attractive in many ways. Because if sin wasn't attractive, well, we wouldn't go for it so easily, would we? Of course it's attractive. And we want to answer that question in my view. Do I want to get well? Or do I want to keep a foot in both camps? Do I want to keep a foot in both camps? It's very easy for us to try and live the Christian life with a foot in both camps. A foot in the camp of those who are prepared to go <clears throat> the road of self-aggrandizement, uh, um, self-satisfaction, self-pleasing, um, uh, if you like. Go down that road, uh, regardless of God's law and His um, what, what he says in his word, to keep a one foot in that camp and, and then one foot in the camp uh, for Sundays, if you like, if I can be cynical for a moment. Uh, one camp, one foot in the camp for Sundays, which will um, mean that we shall um, be going uh, uh, God's way for one day, perhaps. <laughs> That's probably too cynical, but I think it sums it up that it's possible to try and live with uh, a foot in each camp. Let's bear in mind those words today as we walk into this day or the rest of this day, if you're reading this later, or if you're hearing this later. Do I want to get well do you want to lead a christian life dear brother and sister in christ do you want to lead a christian life which will bring honor to his name do you want to lead a christian life which will be useful in his kingdom his kingdom on earth yes what do you want to get well he wants us to walk well as it were and uh he is the only person who is able to enable us to do so. Let's pray as we close. <clears throat> Lord, help us to place ourselves unreservedly in your nail-pierced hands, trusting you that, to quote the scripture, Lord, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. If there's not been a time when we have invited you into our lives, then help us to answer the question, do we want to get well by turning to you, who has promised that if we do, you will never, ever turn us away. Amen. What a wonderful promise. Jesus says, if you turn to me, he doesn't say if you're good enough. He doesn't say if you're fit. He doesn't say if you're holy enough. He doesn't say if you're the right breed of, of uh, uh, nationality. He doesn't say if your parents have been Christians. He doesn't say if you're a good churchgoer. No, no. He just says, if you turn to me, I will never turn you away. How wonderful. The Lord bless you. Goodbye. <laughs>